guys and girls. Do like another test. I'm using my different phone. It's a fairly decent camera. Let me see. I don't even know if I can see this on my own YouTube channel. Give me a second here. I got two hands. Thank God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wait a minute. There it is. I see it. But I don't hear it. There it is. Oh, yeah. It. Latency isn't too bad. But I don't want to listen to it. All right. Here's one straight out of the box. This pertains to... I'm not picking on... Hold on, steady. Amazon. Amazon, good thing. eBay, etc. But... Uh, yeah, I see I'm wiggling it around. Man, the resolution doesn't look too bad. But if it's not a shop, they're just selling it. They're not opening them up. They're not checking them, testing them, tuning them. Odds are you're in for a nightmare. You might get lucky, maybe. I've already looked at this one a little bit, so I'll be able to find a couple things and maybe even more. And as I look at this a little bit closer. Yeah, so it looks like yeah, I can see it on my laptop now. Cool. So anyways, uh, sometimes I use my phone. For some of you guys, when you, some of you guys have asked me, man, how do I see that little stuff? Well, when I take my glasses off, I mean, if you know my bench is built up high, I'm really close to the radio, and I see fantastic up close. And I looked at my camera. Matter of fact, I'm taking off these right now. And... Uh, Let's take a look at this. Sometimes I use my phone for this. Okay, that works online. That's cool. But I notice I can't move it. I might get another type of camera, but I like having the phone like this. If I didn't, if it didn't shake, I don't even know what you call it. I think I just called what I just did panning by doing this. But I can't move it up and down, left and right, unless I move the phone. I wish I could. That way, I'd be able to do because uh, it, this it, this needs to stop really. There we go. Look close. No, this radio has not been fired up. But yeah, I use my phone sometimes just for this, just for looking at it like this. And look, you know, works pretty cool. Technology's come a long ways. <laughs> sure has. Okay, and there was another piece I seen. Football right there. My finger in there. Where'd it go? Right there, dead center of the camera. Something that size, it looks pretty small, but if that gets rolling around on the inside of your radio, there you go. That can definitely short things out. I know it's there somewhere. See it? See how small the other components are? That can be a real nightmare bouncing around. And sometimes that's exactly what happens. Even I have some come back at times. You know, it's, they'll bounce loose or come loose in chipping. You couldn't find it. You didn't see it. It's up underneath something else or someone's worked on it. Makes it a nightmare. And this is brand spanking new out of the box. You can see it's all not even converted yet. See a little arrow. Let's look at the back side. Let me get rid of this plastic. <laughs> this is going to be Brian or Tim. Yeah, I'm showing your radio. It looks screwed up. That's just how it always goes. So you'll know. One of you guys, at whatever is next on the invoicing. And Dan, you're up this week too. 29 and 70. Yep, you're up. And a couple of radios that have been shipped back. And Anyways, busy, busy, busy. That's what factory looks like. That's out of the box. I would like 
here up here so you'll be able to see better yep that's brand new so you guys know what brand new looks like looks like the camera's doing a pretty good job i haven't used this in a long time for doing any videos just when i'm out and about it's my phone my new phone that ain't brand new but look at i didn't see that one before either there we go See that one floating there. Usually you'll find them along the rails. Solder splashes. There's one, it's almost always right there. <laughs> almost always. Well, that's what a new one looks like. Yeah, and they do take a couple of hours. They do see what happens if they get lodged. Like right in there and vibration hot and cold and shaking in a paint shaker like a truck and you come loose well that's what a new one looks like right there right out of the box and i tape them up naturally <clears throat> oh a couple of guys since i've been putting more videos up of mope and yeah he's down by my feet right now like, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of truck drivers. <clears throat> Some guys are saying, yeah, I want to get a dog. Well, I've raised a couple of dogs in a truck. If anybody goes back far enough to remember Hanky and Panky with a dog named Spanky. Either in a 13 meter shit spreader or a big old freight liner. I'm Hanky. Her handle was Panky, the dog named Spanky. We spent a lot of time on her, a lot of time around Jacksonville. And then there was Rocky, and then Buddy. They're all free dogs. Well, they're not free, but uh, they took some time. Buddy was really sick. Rocky wasn't sick at all. No, he wasn't. I got Rocky from. An old black man named Slim. He used to hang around Dallas a lot, a long time ago. I think he's passed away. Rest in peace, Slim. Some of you guys might may have known him. He was a good guy. Real tall, like six foot four, five, thin. He was a bed bug holler. He'd hang around at the villa. And so I started doing his radio work in the 80s and then back in the 90s again at the 101 CB radio shop. That's where I got Rocky. He was tearing the truck up. And uh, Buddy was a stray dog that walked up to me in Gelp, New Mexico, middle of the night when I was going for a pack of cigarettes. He took, he was a lot of work, but he's a lot of joy, he's a lot of love. I don't really care personally about a dog's breed. The older I get, the more I realize I like a mutt. I like who they are. So if you're going to get one, they walk up to you. I just seen a video. I see all kinds of videos on YouTube. I'm watching my own right now. <laughs> There's a UK driver, I think, or Australia. He was feeding a dog at a truck stop. That kind of inspired me to do this. And uh, I'm going to talk about this and do this, this radio. <laughs> so think about it. I have a diesel. Well, not what I'm about to say, but it's a lot of responsibility. I bought a, a really nice large diesel pusher and built this Faraday cage with trailer in my office primarily for him. I made a promise to the Almighty above when he set his leg on me, not the Almighty, but Buddy, and looked up at me. I knew what to do. I swore to God I would never do another dog after I buried Rocky. I swore to God, no way. I cried and cried and cried. Yeah, man to man for any ladies listening. I cried harder than I ever cried with all my crying tantrums put together that I could ever remember as an adult. I don't even ever, ever remember crying. But I took this one on. Yeah, I did. The floor is a mess, so I'm not going to show you. But yeah, underneath my bench, it's also built for him. He's at my feet. He's underneath this, laying in his bed. So if you're thinking about getting a dog, 
in a truck, do it. But there's going to be, it's a lot, if you get an older dog, it's harder to teach him. Buddy was already five months old, but it worked. Nothing like what I was able to do or what I'm able to do with a pup. It's totally different. So anyways, you, if you get a, a baby, a puppy, you can teach them a lot different. Dogs in a truck are awesome. You can stay out of the truck stop. You only need to go get fuel and then pull out. Because I'm here in New Mexico, I'm stopping at these places. I used to stop and cook out, let my dogs out. Even right here near town, when I go to Deming. I used to get out, run up and down mountains around Colorado, Utah, Wyoming. I got a lot of exercise, and I would still be doing it now if I was in the truck. Anyways, there are a lot of responsibilities, but they're awesome. The love is fantastic. The last video I did, when he was on the bench, his chest was up, his head, his forehead was up against my chest. That's like the I love you thing. That's what he's telling me, and, and he knows it, because he can hear my heartbeat. It raises every time he does that. And when I lay on him... He acts like he doesn't want me to be. He, he, he's got these sounds he makes. Roar, that, you know, he wants how many years trucking? 17 over the road, coast to coast. I see a Galvatronics. I have been looking at my phone. So, yeah, I did 17 years over the road. LTL on the Northeast Coast, bought a 78 Freightliner in 85. Get rid of it, didn't like grease. Well, it's a long story. A lot of, a lot of years, man. Not as long as some would be like 35 or 6 if I stayed out there now. Anyways, I don't think there's any issues with dogs now than there would be compared to then. I'm sure there's some kind of security deposits. Getting back to these, be careful where you get them. This is just a test video. I want to see how it's going to work out. It looks like it's more shakier on my computer than when I'm holding it, but I want to also see was this. If I use this type of phone, this phone's almost as good as my camera that I use. I wish it would zoom in, like if I went like this, but I can't zoom in. I have to tilt it. And that means I have to take my eyes off what I'm doing. So we're just checking a few things out in a different couple angles. Let's see someone saying something here. Looks like it said the same thing twice. It's coming through my laptop. Yeah, hey, I'm just learning how to do this, guys. So bear with me. It looks like it comes through twice. Okay, back with trucking was real. I've been out here for 18. <laughs> I have not made it to New Mexico yet. Well, New Mexico is pretty cool, man. You go back in the day. I could talk about some crazy stuff now. I'm not going to do that right now, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes, it's nice out here. Interstate 40 was probably my favorite. Going back and forth, back and forth, JFK to LAX, whatever, Holland Freight. Interstate 40, I get a lot of. It's never really bad in the wintertime. If you're from where it snows, it, it, it's never bad on that 40. Albuquerque or Flagstaff, just a little molehill is all it is. But if you're not used to it, it can. Get, I guess it'd be hairy. Yeah, I liked it. I don't do it anymore. I still travel. I'm always going to travel. It's in my blood. 40 is cool. Yeah, yeah, it is, man. Yeah, 40 is all right. You know, dropping down 15 and coming back up across 40, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma. You know, I'm just, yeah, 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 done there, Ben. I remember it. I still have a, uh, I swear to God, when I got off the road, I was never going to buy another map. And I bought my last laminated. Yeah, 70s cool too. Yeah, Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. I don't like all the the uh, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Missouri in the winter time. Back then, the roads were just really, really, really rough and flat and windy, blow you right off the highway. Uh, yeah, 70 out west is where I liked it. You know, from Denver. You know, over into Utah, down 15. I, matter of fact, I worked on the completion of I-70 before I started driving a truck. I did the drilling and the blasting work for these products out there. 
And there was a really cool place. I don't know if it exists anymore. We're talking a few years ago. It's called Ray Steaks. It was a little bar in uh, Greener or Utah. It was like the Flintstones furniture inside. Big slices of wood for the chairs and the tables. And the pork chops were just as big, man. Uh, it was some good stuff. Okay, I realized that my cam, my phone shows messages for a second, but I got to look at my laptop to see what they said. I said, I'm from Illinois. Ha. Yep, out west. Yeah, I'm from the mistake on the lake, man. Cleveland, Ohio, born and raised. Mistake in Lincoln. <laughs> well, it kind of sucks. You can't hear both sides of the conversation. I got to look over to the left and lean because I'm getting out of my glasses now. Yep. Yeah, if you're from the land of Lincoln, you know, or anywhere from there, I am Missouri, Oklahoma, you're east of the snow, so it doesn't bother you. But as the driver trainer, I realized that people that didn't, weren't raised in the snow, it took a little bit longer to teach them and nerves to get on ice and snow. A lot of people that are from, you know, where it never snows, don't like to go back into the north northwest Lincoln was over backwards uh, backwards K <laughs> gotcha all right I'm sitting here bumping the gums now at 17 minutes I, I'm not gonna fire this radio up it has some issues and then which would possibly cause more issues talk back and the uh, mic chain don't need that well, that's this phone, this camera. I'm looking at another camera. If this works the way I think it could work, that's where I learned to drive, ice and snow. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. My birthday is uh, like when it snows. So, yeah, older brothers driving their cars, Volkswagens and donuts. <laughs> Yes, there's nothing wrong with the north, north, northeast, midwest. You know, you, we all learn what we learn. It's like, you know, you, you find guys from Georgia. You know, that red clay driving on that stuff, if you're always out in the woods, man, that's some slick snot right there, like baggies on Vaseline. Great Lakes, a lot of lake effect. Oh, yeah, man, Cleveland's got that. It doesn't seem like it snows as much as it used to around there I, I make it back every now and then but i grew up you know i was born in the early 60s and it, <laughs> it used to get cold and it used to snow we were boot hopping you know the buses the regular school bus would stop and school didn't stop man you had to get there you know it's like your parents said now i relate you know you had to walk walk to school both ways uphill in the snow and i relate <laughs> sure do sure do and things are a lot different now some good, some bad. Anyways, uh, I'm not going to try to bore anybody to death here. Any more comments? It was cool growing up there, man. It was. A lot of partying. A lot of rock and roll. A lot of cool rock and roll music. All right, I'm not here to bore nobody. This is a test. I appreciate you stopping by, man. Mr. Galvatron X9. I think you got a lot of comments. I'm going to move this around a little bit so I can get a hang of what it's going to do. Watch well, this way. I got to find it. I have to make sure I find a camera that will allow me to use one hand. See, I can't move it and do that. That way I can go like that. Because that picks it up. Because it's important. And I say this all the time that you guys see, like this, everything at the same time. You gotta watch out for the shysters out there, man, because they're there. If anything's out of your sight, because otherwise they'll be running one signal into this, another signal into that, and they're this. They're not even using it, or they are, but it's going somewhere else. Oh, did I blow someone's cover? Lamp lighter. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, just if I could do this, hit a button and it records. I know I'm wiggling right now. I see that on my laptop. You know, I, there's a guy that's coming through tonight. I probably shouldn't even say it's going to be dropping one off. It'd be great just to hit the button while he's driving away. He knows it's going to be a long time before he gets his radio back. But I could show him 
what his radio is doing, it's not doing while he's driving away. Talk to him on the radio and get things accomplished. This is a lot of work, believe it or not, doing this. You probably think, oh, he just sits at a bench, you know, and works on radios. That's just like some people saying, oh, he just drives a truck. <laughs> get the point, really. Oh, he doesn't sit there. Well, no. There's a lot involved in this. Hey, y'all be cool. Thanks for dropping by. And uh, maybe we'll do a little bit more of this and have some fun in it, too, in the future. Check this out. This doesn't let me take pictures while I'm doing this. How long will it to get a radio from you? We're at, at minimum 30 days right now. Minimum. I always ask radio techs if they can clip anything if they say, yeah, I admit, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing to clip. Nothing, man. Nothing. You put more in and or alter the circuits that are already there. One of the worst things. Glad, glad you mentioned that. They should have never named the AMC circuit, you know, the limiter. They get the lean limiter. People think that, oh, it's a limiter. It's a governor. If you know what you're doing, then you can actually, the radio will produce more power where you need it to. And keep it there it's like your diesel engine it's been a while since i've been out there i don't know what the torque specs are and the power bands are new diesels i know the older stuff give me a b model you know or an a55 or an ntc but anyways after a specific rpm if their engine isn't tuned for that then you bring it up to 25 2600 rpm sure it's revving but all you're doing is stretching rods you know, and tearing up springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it on my phone. It's kind of interesting. Getting back to the AMC circuit and clipping and snipping. A radio will produce less power at the fundamental frequency in the real world than what you see in a meter. I try to show you guys this all the time. Yeah, I put my, my neck out there on the chopping block for this. But anyways, that's okay. That's because I can. Never clip and snip. Alter, modify, and update. If anything, update. There's a lot of reasons why you can. It's just more time consuming. You gotta have test equipment to do it. Without the test equipment, then it's you can't. Just a meter, just a scope, or some equipment. You, you can't do it, guys. You guys that have been around a long time, you're I know you're catching on. I see some comments over there. You know, thank, well, thank you guys for the live chat. No, stay away from the clip and snip, man. And if all they show you is that, the primary thing, well, it's like over revving. Well, look at the over Mike Daniels. You have, <laughs> yeah, we're here, man. We live. Yeah, we're still kicking. Sure are. I see comments, Dave. We'll talk a little bit more, but I do, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the future, I'll be able to just hit the button and go. Even in the desert, I had to do some rewiring and some antennas and Ethernet cables. But, yeah, I can. I don't know if I can use multiple channels. I have to learn how to use OBS software, but I've got multiple of these that I can use. I, I don't want to use this. This is my phone. I don't want it to stop recording when I'm... When I get a phone call, etc. So I want my phone to be a primary. All right, guys. Thanks for dropping by. Hope some of this is informative. This is basically just a test for me. Let's see, this might work. Let's see, just filled up that TA bunch over my <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, over modulated splatter box garbage. Wow, wow, wow. Do they, ever, does, do they ever sound like a dog barking in the backyard? Woo, 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 woo. Well, how can I order from me? Facebook, man. Facebook. And it's going to be a while. You got to get out Facebook. And where I stand right now is I have a lot of other radios to uh, get back to customers that have been here a while. Once these are all done, repairs, etc., it's only going to be my older customers or if you're buying new. I'm one guy. This takes time, and I got to breathe every now and then. 
So new radios, I, mean, I haven't, I've only taken a couple new radio sales in, in like the last month or so. So uh, I got to get a bunch of other radios done. Some guys are not patient. And what I do when I see them, you see it getting pushy, I reach over to the laptop. I see the block thing is poof, gone. No more pushy. I won't deal with pushy. It's like, do you push the guy that's cooking your food or lady? No, you don't. Sitting here doing this work, it's like blindsiding in the rain, you know. Some of it's easy, but to really sit here and tune them and get them right to the T, every single one, it's too easy for a guy to say, ah, that's close enough, like your alignment that pulls to the right, you know, you don't want that. Time for some, let me see if I missed any messages here. Mike Daniels, you need to hire some help, but you got to put it. Yeah, yeah, well, I've done that, man. I've done that. You know, the help thing is an installer and window person. If I could find the right person, I might do it again, maybe. But we're talking a lot of work, and it's a lot of stress teaching them. More like a teacher off the old Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I found that software, man. The teacher, what that is, I believe, it, let me get it correct. It's a saxophone or bigger. It's, it's brass, a brass air piece of musical equipment i'm not i don't know a lot about musical equipment but it's one of those a big one and they they talk through it if you're talking about the charlie brown teacher they're talking through it is what they're doing and then they record that that's the charlie brown sounds pathetic isn't it what good is a radio if you got to repeat yourself i remember when the speed limit was 55 and that speedometer said 117 yeah i was a nut bunch of us were and you know you, you get a bear bear report where you're asking for one or you hear someone say there's a 1033 or you see if someone says i see smoke and anyone that's run triple digit you see smoke somewhere it's always an accident yeah this is why i'm into my radios and roger beeps are even worse man you had to take your eyes off the, the horizon and look at your dash to see what was beeping you know, beep, all you hear is the damn beep. It's aggravating. Yes, it is. Mostly the reason I am a stickler with these radios is snow and ice. I am alive because of another truck driver more than once. Saving my life, listening to him, understanding windstorms, and being able to repay the same thing over and over. Yeah, I get into my radios. I, I do. But yeah, that the truck stop stuff. You want a truck stop radio? I'm not the guy. My radios won't sound that loud. My radios will walk right over them and last, but they're not going to be allowed in the truck stop or even usually in your hometown. Four to one doesn't sound loud up close, but you want range? Yes, they have range and they're, and they're clear. But, anyways, now I'm talking too much. <laughs> yeah, the truck stop radios <laughs> around here, man. When I get a lot of, let me see what's on the radio. Besides a little bit of noise, is uh, backup radios. The only time they turn them on around here, there's a couple of guys that are starting to talk now. Is when there's a backup. Hey, what's the what's the what's the backup for? Let's see here. It's my M4. Hey, man, what's going on out there? Everybody having fun yet? Awesome on the whole lot of fun, man. Well, it's all in the attitude, but glad you're having a good attitude tonight. Sounds like your glass is half full instead of uh, half empty. Anyways, man, wherever you're going, have yourself an awesome trip and a great morning. 163, I'm clear. That was, that was a pretty short one. Yeah, we always got a real one around here. I'm proud. Maybe bad. Wow. Yeah, sometimes faster, man. Yeah, those were the days. Those were the days. 27 passive kilohertz. Uh, jammers, such as in uh, fish binders. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go into that stuff. I, it's a totally, totally different type of trucking industry today. Matter of fact, I talked to a friend of mine. 
owner operator ENZ years and he's like man I'm driving a company truck now they're paying him what he wants which is good money and uh, that's the way to do it I guess if you're an owner operator you're making money man keep on doing it hell yeah but now this guy doesn't have to hammer down speed worry about his weight I got you got you done there been there let's see more messages classic what's the backup yeah yeah <laughs> yeah backup radios i hear and then they'll always, i'll start telling them you know where i live i'm real close to this the arizona line i don't remember the signs out, out there when i was out there but we're talking like 20 years ago about the high winds and uh, now they close down the highway here quite a bit right here on the other end of town or at the 15 mile marker they, they don't let people through let's see a dust storm there's just an accident a bad one here a couple weeks ago but yeah, it's like, leave the radio on, man. I remember years ago, that was like doing your motor vehicle inspection. You checked your radio first, you know. I come back to you. Yeah, yeah I, I do. I When I go to Deming, I, I go to Deming and go, go grocery shopping. It's 60 miles either way. I don't really speed that fast. I don't need to. The speed limit's 55. But it, it's hard to get people on the radio. And went, hey, here's something for you guys that have been around. And some of them, the, the drivers will come through here just looking for a base station to jack with. I don't jack with people, but I will back. I don't really like to, but you know, guys, the ones that have been out there forever, sometimes some of us got to lead by example. Really. You know, if you've ever talked to me on the phone, you know that my guy, sailors, sailor, sailor, slash truck driver vocabulary so if i stutter stammer while i'm speaking now it's because i'm not using it i'm doing my best not to cuss and you know the guys that are new out there help them a little bit man remember the old days we carried our white mule gloves right there by the fire extinguisher and if you see someone trying to pull on that pin we help them anybody on the side of the road if you didn't move over to the left he pulled over behind him or in front of him and helped him. Now, I know the phones changed everything. Look, I didn't get on here and start talking about truck driving days. Appreciate your comments. Let's see. Yeah, there's a backup guy who never ceased to amaze me. It's how you come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, you could. A GPS is never going to be the same as an actual radio. It's not going to happen. Uh, fish finders. First thing, yeah, yeah, fish binder. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Especially when you use two sending units, one forward, one backward. Those were the days. Yep. Hey, man, you guys be cool. I do got to get to work. We're going to do this again sometime. Thanks for stopping by. If you're out there cruising those highways and byways, safety first now, right? 163, hard drive. We're clear. Click, click. Figure out these buttons. And then there's the ones that get out in the middle of the link playing container. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. One more comment. That's when I knew it was over for me. What I learned how to do all the tickets it took with the bicycle driver's licenses, you know, 52 in the deck. It took those licenses. You know, in which I, I had a good license, but you guys that come from the past know what I'm talking about. It wasn't necessary anymore to drive like that. Yeah, you get where you got to go. It's nice to have that extra horsepower and no governor to step on the pedal and get away from the, the, the jam, you know, and know what's ahead of you using your radio. Yeah, that was that's some good stuff. That way it's a lot less stressed versus being stuck. You know, the guy trying to pass you does a half mile an hour faster. <laughs> All right, man. Good night. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I got to get to work. Be cool. Safety first. We're clear. Click, click.